So one of the things that we're seeing a lot of in golf now is this, independent brands coming out with their premium or tour golf ball, but are they actually any good? We have things like the Pro V1, the Callaway, the TaylorMade, all in the premium market, but do these balls stack up? What we see from them is generally, they're straight to consumer and they're costing a lot less. So we're gonna do a little bit of a test today and see if this one here, the Decathlon Inesis Golf Ball, is actually worth buying. $24.99 compared to a $44.99 golf ball, is it worth you saving 20 pounds? We're gonna hit some chips and puts to get a little general feel of the golf ball to start off with, then we're gonna to put it through its paces against the industry standard, the Pro V1, and see how it stacks up. Let's go and have a little chip and a putt now. just a little bit about the golf ball. Doesn't really give you much on the back of the packet here. It says distance, softness, green side control, saying that it's got all those. It's a three piece golf ball with your urethane cover, so we should get that feel of softness, but also then because of the core, how that's built, we should see that we're getting the driver distance as well. Um, looks good in the packet. I'm not really fussed what it looks like in the packet, but everything about it is good so far. Let's give it a test and see if it stacks up. Oh, just on the edge there. So, initial thoughts and feels on the feelings. I like it, feels pretty decent. The pitches and chips that I was hitting there, they were spinning up quite nicely, had a little bit of grip on them didn't feel overly soft, didn't feel overly firm, felt pretty decent. I would say it was a tiny bit firmer feeling, a little bit more clickier than um, the, the Pro V1 that you would generally feel. When we do look at one of the balls as well, if I just clean this one off here, the, the urethane cover that they have on them, they don't look as sort of dull in colour. When you see like a Pro V1 or Callaway, the white almost looks a little bit dull as well. These are a little bit sparkler, so I think the cover might just be a little bit firmer. But overall, chipping and putting feels fantastic. One thing that I want to do is get it in a bunker, hit some shots and see if it scuffs up because all the chips and pitches that I've hit, there's not been any groove marks there and I hit 60 yard pitches. So how is it going to hold up? Because that's one of the things we have to look for. With a cheaper golf ball, you would generally see that they don't last as long. So if you're paying 24.99 but going through them twice as quickly, it's not actually a saving. So we're going to put it through its paces under a little bit of endurance and see how the cover um, stacks up with this one golf ball. And then we're going to go and get some data on it. Let's go into the bunker now. So 10 bunker shots now, same golf ball, see how the cover lasts after these. Like I say, it's not worth buying them if you're just using double the amount of balls because they are cutting up as much. So 10 shots, let's go. Okay, so 10 shots done there in the bunker. The only tiny, tiny little scuff there that we've got is one there and just the tiniest little bits there. But for 10 shots with a lot of wet sand on the golf ball and a lot of wet sand on the club face, I think that stood up remarkably well. And you probably saw from some of the shots there, quite a lot of spin on it. So it's getting a lot of friction on the face as it's going through. It was really out cut, um, if caught nicely, one bounce and a little zip on it. So. Very, very impressed with that out of the bunker and how the, uh, the durability is. So, so far, so good. We're going to now go and hit five seven irons and five drivers against the Pro V1. And we're going to be looking at the spin number and the carry number. One of the things that I would see as well, generally with these independent balls, now the cheaper tour balls, as it were, when it gets up to driver, 
the distance tends to drop off. So let's see if the Inesis is any different. Can it stand up against that Pro V1? Let's go and hit those shots now. So five shots now with a Pro V1 and an Inesis, seeing how far they carry and what the spin numbers are like. Let's give it a go. We're gonna go Pro V1 first, five shots. And go from there. So that's five done with the Pro V, it's five now with the Inesis. So pretty good with the seven iron there. The Pro V1 came out 162 yards with 6,700 revs of spin. The Inesis came out at 160 with 6,100. So only 600 revs and two yards. Not my longest, it's cold and I've got five jackets on. But felt good, the flight looked good. Seeing that the numbers are very similar. So we're gonna do five Pro Vs, one with driver, then five Inesises with the driver. Like I say, will the driver number drop down with the Inesis? That's what we would normally see from um, these sort of budget premium golf balls, as it were. But overall looking good at the minute so five balls pro v1 gc2 let's go it's a good benchmark there 282 with 1600 revs of spin So 275 yards average carry with the Pro V at 1,900 revs of spin. Let's see what the Inesis will do. So five shots with this, and then I'm gonna tell you whether I think they're worth it or not. So is it worth buying a tour budget ball, this Inesis Tour 900? I would say yes. That driver then at the end went 272, so not far behind that Pro V, only three yards and the spin was 1,700. So not seeing a massive drop off there. We saw the durability was good, the feel around the green was good, the iron spin was good. Overall, it's a good golf ball. So for 24.99 versus 44.99, yeah, give it a go, see what it's like. You might find out you don't like it. It would be interesting to see playing maybe a full round of golf with one of these balls, how they stack up, you know, a little bit more in the durability test. But overall, seem pretty good there. So give it a go. That's the Inesis 900. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.